Welcome to First to Lutheran Church of Our Re Redeemer. My name is Pastor Laurel Overbo, and on behalf of the family, I want to thank you for your presence today, for all of your prayers and your support during their time of loss. As you may have noticed, this Paschal candle back here is lit today. It is lit by our baptismal font because it is a reminder that as we are baptized, we are claimed as children of God in the waters of baptism forever. This service is an Easter service. It is an Easter liturgy where we proclaim Christ's great love for everyone and, and promise of the resurrection. As we begin our procession today, I invite you to please check to make sure your cell phones are silenced, and I invite you to rise. You may be seated. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Jake, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer and comfort one another in our grief. Thanks be to God. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ, in his baptism, Jake was clothed with Christ, and in the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. I invite you to op open your red hymnal in the front of your pew in the lower underneath in the hymnal racks to hymn number 742 as we sing together, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, hymn 742.
We turn to the bulletins for the acclamation. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Amen. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, graciously tend those who mourn, that casting their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We listen now to our readings. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalm 90. And Jake liked numbers, and he liked figures. And so uh, I chose this uh, reading today as, as uh, it talks about uh, numbers and uh, God's eternity and human frailty in our life. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust, and you say, turn back, your mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath, we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sign. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong. Even then, their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great in the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as, you, as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest in your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. And then a reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, 
and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for today is according to John, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. My Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and I prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again. And where I will take you there to myself so that where I am going, there you you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the place where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, if you know the Father, you know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior. Amen. What God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlastingly. I hope you hear these words and that you can cling to them and let them sink very deeply into your life and into your heart. Let them echo through this day and carry you into the next days because these words are the thread that runs through the gospel. They speak a truth about Jake and about you. If there is anything that overcomes and sees us through death, it is love. It is that love is stronger than death. What God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlastingly. These words were true for Jake in his life, and they're true for him yet today. They were true for Jake before he died. And they're true for you, all of you today. And they will be true for you tomorrow. While I believe the truth of these words and the strength of God's love, I also know the promise of the gospel in hearing that doesn't magically take away grief. It doesn't dry our tears, and it doesn't answer any of the questions that you may be bringing today. Some of you may be here today with Thomas's own question on your mind, and it's a fair question to ask. As Thomas says in the gospel, John 14, verse 7, how do we know the way? How, Lord, can we know? How can a parent who's outlived her son know the way? How can a child who loses his own father know the way on a day like today? We can't, and we aren't expected to. How can we know the way when one of your loved ones, your friends, dies and life gives us what you don't want, what you don't ask for? How can we know the way when death shatters the order of the world and nothing makes sense? We can't. We don't. And the truth is we don't have to. Because sometimes there are times in our lives, days like this, where it's hard. And that's where God steps in and reminds us. He is the way. As Psalm 90 starts out, it gives us a gentle reminder that God has been our dwelling place. Some translations of the Bible use a descriptive phrase that God is our refuge. 
God is the one who doesn't change. Even as our lives change, even as life changes on the minute, God is our source of our love. God is our strength and our home. That Lord is constant as our source of love and mercy. And so God has taken the pressure off of us to always have all the answers, to always figure it all out, to always be getting it right. God in Jesus has shown us the way so that even though your world has changed drastically in these past days, through all time, through all seasons, God is present. We heard this in the reading. James chose to have Ecclesiastes read, and we heard it again in Psalm 90. Moses was the writer of the psalm, and he said, For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past. So the psalm continues, So teach us your, to count our days that we would gain a wise heart that we would know and recognize the frailty of life is what the psalmist is saying. The psalm writer asked God, teach us to count our days very carefully so that we would always have God's wisdom and love and grace in our hearts. It's a prayer that reflects not only the uncertainty of life, but also the, need, the deep need that we have for God's mercy and joy. It is a reminder to live one day at a time. It's a reminder to not worry about what the future might hold. Because as we all know, every single day brings enough challenges for that day. And so, we number our days. We thank God for the gift of grace to get through each one. As Marion said, and as you all know, I think it's fair to say that Jake was a math guy. He worked with numbers. He had to know how to add and subtract very quickly in order to broker a deal in the rapid fire environment of his career. And based on the stories that I've been privileged to hear over the past few days, it's safe to say Jake knew what it meant to number his days, to live each day as it came. Some of them were very full, and we'll save those stories for later. But making the, each day the fullest, the best way he knew how, and then allowing for God's grace to fill in the gaps. Through all seasons of Jake's life, no matter how difficult or fast-paced, that is the grace to know God was present. And that is the promise that we continue to lean in today as we remember the gospel. The gospel promise that what God creates God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlastingly. That is the ultimate answer to the question of how can we know the way? God has shown Jake and the promises, all of you, that he will prepare a place for you and for God's children in his kingdom so that all of us have a room in his ultimate home, a place of true belonging saved for each of us. And when God leaves claim to us, as God has laid claim to every one of us, he won't let you go. So rest assured and be promised that God is our ultimate home, and that is a promise we can count on. Amen. We listen now to our special music, Amazing Grace.
If you are able, I ask the congregation to please stand. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. Lord, in your mercy. Help us in the midst of things that we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we sing together, Abide With Me, 629 in the Red Hymnal. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jacob Hans. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to rise for our recessional.